Hi everyone, my name is Tarun Kathuria and I'll be talking, me and Yang will be talking about unit capacity max flow and almost done to the fourth third time. Uh, this is based on the merger of two papers, one by Yang Hui and Aaron Sitford and the other by myself. So what is the max flow problem? We're given a graph G with N vertices and M edges and each edge has a capacity U which is a integer from one and capital Q. And there are two special terminal vertices, a source vertex S and a sink vertex T. And our goal is to find the maximum flow from S to T while ensuring that the flow on any edge is not more than its capacity and that the flow in equals to the flow out for all non-terminal vertices. So why do we care about this problem? It's a fundamental problem with decades of research behind it. And it has a lot of applications, including bioprotect matching, scheduling, partitioning, clustering, and multi-commodity flow, et cetera. And this is a structure optimization problem, which has uh, been of significant challenge to both classical combinatorial methods, as well as more recent continuous optimization methods. And improvements for this have yielded broad tools, which are useful for other problems like approximate regression, et cetera. So to start, we consider undirected flow problems and let's assume it's unit capacity. So capital U equals to one for now. And our goal is to send one unit of flow F from S to T in the best possible way. And the characterization of best leads to different kinds of flow problems. So what should we minimize? If we minimize the L infinity, L infinity norm of the flow, we would get the max flow. If you minimize the L2 norm of F, we would get that this objective is the electrical flow. So minimizing it would be an electrical flow. Uh, and if we minimize the length, which is the L1 norm of F, then we would get the shortest path. You can also consider other objectives. So we will look at uh, some prior work on this problem. So to start with, we have Karzanov and Evan Tarjan, which get an M to the three half, M to the two third poly U algorithm. And Goldberg Rao get the same runtime but with logarithmic dependence on U. And both of these are augmenting paths, so they're sending L1 style minimization uh, primitives. Then there's Deitch and Spielman, where they get M to the three half log U by considering interior point methods and showing that the iterates that one needs to send are just L2 norm minimizing flows, which are just electrical flows. Uh, Madri opened up the IPM framework and considered things in a different manner, uh, but still uh, by iterating electrical flows got M to the 10 sevens, U to the 10 sevens. And Liu and Sidford considered different styles of IPMs, different barriers to get M root 10 log U, but they're still iterating electrical flows. And Madri 16 improves their dependence on U. And finally, Liu and Sidford get M to the 11 over eight, plus the flow of one, u to the one fourth, by instead of iterating L2, iterating a mixed L2 LP kind of objective. And to understand the runtimes of uh, Madri and Liu and Sidford, they, they, they can all be seen as three half minus some eta. And our result will be an m to the fourth third plus the flow of one, u to the one third time algorithm. And in the special case of u equals to one, we uh, bipartite matching can be captured. And this work, uh, along with this work, which appears in this fox by Brand et al, are the best runtime algorithms for this. And we also get the same runtime for the min SD card. Um, so for starters, we look at approximate max flow in undirected graphs. And here the goal is to return a feasible SD flow whose value is at least one minus epsilon times the max flow. For this, CKMST get an MN to the one third poly one over epsilon algorithm where they use electrical flows as multiplicative weights oracles. And then there was a long line of work which culminated in a near linear time algorithm where instead of L2, they work directly with L infinity by building some coarse L infinity approximator to change the representation and then solve it uh, by boosting accuracy using continuous methods. And so after this work, one can ask if uh, one can combine these primitives with IPMs, but that seems to be a problem because IPMs seemingly need L2 style primitives. So what is Madri's strategy? Uh, well, it can be divided into three things. The first is pre-processing, which allows us to assume that the graph is undirected. 
And then we precondition by adding some edges from S to T. And then we route the flow until some threshold value. And then after that threshold value, we just route it to uh, using augmented paths to get a algorithm, which is M to the three half minus eight R runtime. And until we get to that threshold value, we just are gonna run an IPM algorithm. So we iteratively improve an SD flow, which improves the objective, which is sending more flow, while also ensuring that we stay away from the constraints, which is that we don't saturate the edges. And we pick a potential to trade off these things. And the magic will be to do better than the naive root M iteration algorithm, what standard IPMs give. So what is the framework? For the framework, there is an algorithm state where I have sent a feasible flow of value B. And then I have a forward and backward weights for every edge, which are different than its capacity. And our potential is a weighted log barrier, which is meant to penalize the forward and backward capacity saturation while ensuring that the flow we send is a value V. And we want to follow the minimizers of the log barrier. Uh, and the way Madri does this is in two steps, which is a progress step where we add a multiple of an ST electrical flow where the resistances are given by the Hessian of the barrier to increase the flow from V to V plus delta, but this only gives us an approximate minimizer. And so then we use a centering step, which allows us to move from an approximate minimizer to an exact minimizer without changing the flow value, which is V plus delta, again, using electrical flows. And the magic isn't changing the weight so progress steps can be larger. So natural question is what prevents the progress steps from being larger? So certainly if we're sending any flow, not just electrical, we should not be allowed to send more flow on any edge than its residual capacity allows for. Hence, the ideal thing would be to want delta to depend on the L infinity norm of rho, which is the congestion vector of the flow we want to send given a residual graph. And so it can be defined as the, the flow F hat on an edge divided by the minimum of the residual capacities of that edge. However, since we're using electrical flows, delta is restricted to depend on the L2 norm instead of the L infinity. We can improve this to L4 norm, but that's still weaker than the L infinity norm. And Liu and Sidford use this to get M to the 11 over eight plus total of one runtime. And the takeaway for the bottleneck here is that it seems hard to do better using only electrical flows as it doesn't allow for strong enough centering. Recall we were first finding an approximate centered point which made progress and then trying to improve the centering. So how do we go about improving this? So the contribution of uh, this paper is to augment a different flow. So instead of augmenting electrical flows, we will send delta more units of a different flow from S to T, which ensures that we are directly centered and that this flow has low L infinity norm congestion, which is ideal. So how to find such a flow? And we will use the KKT conditions to do it. So recall that we wanted to find the minimizers of this barrier function. If we look at the KKT conditions, we'll get a flow F and vertex potentials Y coming from the dual, such that B Y equals to the gradient of phi at F. So given a centered flow potential pair F Y of value B, so we know it satisfies B Y equals to the grad phi of F, we want to find a flow f hat y hat whose value is delta, so that if I send f plus f hat flow, so its value is v plus delta, and this f plus f hat y plus y hat pair satisfies the KKT condition, so it's a centered point. And the subproblem to achieve this would be a Bregman divergence problem, which is the difference of the original function and its L1 uh, approximation. And we'll be considering the Bregman divergence of the weighted log barrier. So let's look at the KKT conditions of the sub problem. So we'll get an F hat Y hat pair such that its flow has value delta and B Y hat is the gradient of the Bregman divergence which just ends up being the difference of the gradients of the log barrier at F plus F hat and F. So now if we add the two flows as well as the potentials, we get B of Y plus Y hat is equal to the, grade, in the gradient of the barrier at F plus F hat, which is the KKT conditions of the original problem and hence is a central point. So the next question we need to ask is how efficiently can we 
solve this uh, problem and we want to solve it in near linear time. And roughly if, I, if I'm given a function phi which has stable Hessians, Newton's method finds a high accuracy minimizer in order one iterations. And this log barrier is self-concordant which guarantees stable Hessian inside a box of some width. And minimizing the Bregman divergence uh, needs to be done over the entire space uh, given a linear constraint rather than just inside a box. So it seems challenging to do it using uh, just this above fact. So instead we will use this idea of Bubeck et al where they say that there is a way of smoothly extending a function which is a sum of uh, coordinate dependent functions which have stable, hins uh, stable Hessians inside a box such that the extension has stable Hessians over the entire space. And the way it works is by you, this quadratically smooth extension is you defined by considering the second order Taylor approximation of the function and extending it by a quadratic outside the box where we did have stable Hessians. So then finally, we just get that we will do a smooth extension of the Bregman divergence and then minimize it by gradient descent or Newton's method uh, and in order one iterations. And each iteration will be a projection so we can use Laplace systems to solve it in near linear time. And this will work to minimize the original problem rather than the smooth problem as long as we can ensure that the infinity norm of the congestion returned is low. So to recap, the strategy is we precondition the graph then we augment a divergence minimization flow uh, and then we do a weight change and we want to ensure that we, we take as large as delta as possible while ensuring that the congestion of the flow that we send has low L infinity norm. And now Yang will tell you about how to do the weight changes. Hi, I'm Yang and now I'm going to explain how weight changes can help us advance more quickly along the central path and achieve our m to the four thirds max low runtime. To start, I'm going to just remind everyone of the definition of a central path point. Here, we're going to let f of nu be a central path point if it's a minimizer over all flows routing new units from s to t of the weighted log barrier. Our algorithm is always going to maintain central path points. Um, so let's say that our current flow is f of nu, and we want to route delta additional units from s to t. This corresponds to computing the difference f hat, which we wish to augment by, which is the difference between f of nu plus delta and f of nu. A main takeaway from the previous discussion up to this point is that as long as we can prove that the congestion of f hat with respect to f of nu is the most 0.1, then we can efficiently advance from f of nu to f of nu plus delta by using Laplacian system solves and Newton's method. The way that we're going to reduce the congestion of the flow f hat is by applying weight changes, or like increasing these weights in w plus and w minus. And this is what was done in previous works of Madri and Lucid for. The weight changes need to satisfy several important properties. First, f of nu still has to be on the central path, even after we do the weight changes. And additionally, the total weight change has to be small. Um, the algorithm kind of blows up if more than m total units of weight change are performed. Now let me talk about how the previous work of Lewin Sidford uh, controlled congestion. In that work, Lewin Sidford actually wanted to control congestion of the electric flow instead of the more complicated divergence minimizing flow here. However, understanding that setting is actually very useful here because the electric flow is actually the second order or the um, highest order approximation of the Bregman divergence. And therefore, a lot of the methods actually carry over. The way that Lew Sidford uh, reduce the congestion can be viewed as setting up a minimax problem using the fact that electric flow is an energy minimizing flow. Intuitively, 
increasing weights corresponds to increasing edge resistances, which in turn actually reduces the congestion of the flow on them. And this was um, done in the previous works of Madri and Lucifer. Precisely, we can set up this minimax form as follows. We're going to let C be a diagonal cost matrix, where for an edge E, um, it costs CE amount of weight increase to increase the resistance of the edge E by one. And we're going to let W be the weight budget that we're willing to tolerate in one round of the algorithm. We're going to let R be the original resistance of the graph, and R prime is the resistance that we're increasing by. Um, so here's the problem. We're maximizing over um, possible resistance increases that are within our weight budget of the amount of electrical energy. And that's max over C R prime one normals W min over all ST flows of the electric energy. Now by signs minimax we can flip the max and min. And then we split up um, the R and R prime terms because they're linear. Now we're going to take the R prime term where we have max over C R prime one normals W and we're going to use duality to turn that into an infinity norm condition. So our final problem is min over a flow routing one unit from S of T of a two norm piece with the resistances R and an infinity norm piece weighted by the cost matrix C. As you can see, this is some mixed L2 plus L infinity norm flow problem. So Louis Ford was able to show that you can actually instead use a mixed L2 plus LP flow solver, work of King Peng and David Wong, to solve this problem um, well enough that uh, it was applicable to reduce the congestion of the electric flow. Another way to view this is that the infinity norm piece has actually regularized the electric flow. So you have this two norm piece, which is the electric flow, but we're regularizing with the infinity norm piece to reduce the congestion. Additionally, recall that our algorithm actually wanted to get weights um, or like resistance increases and not some flow at the end. Fortunately, because of this minimax setup, um, the optimum actually comes naturally with a pair flow F and weight to W that induce that flow. And you can get these weights, for example, by taking a gradient of the flow. And that comes just very naturally from this minimax setup that we did. So how do we do this for a divergence minimizing flow? Well, it turns out it's actually exactly the same, more or less. Um, just to remind everyone, the electric energy is the second order um, or like the highest order approximation of Bregman divergence because the Bregman divergence is subtracting out the first order, the gradient term. Um, because this is like a quadratic problem, it makes sense to kind of smooth it quadratically outside of a region. And we do this just to maintain that the Hessian is stable throughout the whole problem, basically. Now we're going to take this smooth divergence problem, and now we're going to apply the minimax framework to it. And intuitively, it's going to work just as well because, well, this divergence problem, because we're smoothing it, and because it's look locally quadratic around the origin, it looks very much like an electric flow. More precisely, we're going to um, set up our log barrier function phi of w. And note that phi of w, the divergence of w, and the divergence of phi of w um, smooth quadratically are all actually linear in w, much like how the electric flows are linear in the resistances are. And this allows us to do the minimax setup in a very similar way. Here we're going to apply a cost matrix to our weight change W prime. The cost matrix is convenient so we can um, ensure like unit weightedness on the final problem in the infinity norm part that we need to solve for the L2 plus LP flows. But it's just convenient to have a cost matrix so we can um, pick the scaling we need. We're going to maximize over C W prime one normal to W and minimize over all flows running delta units from S to T 
all of this smoothed or quadratically extended diversions. Once again, we can flip the min and the max and then separate um, the divergence with weights w plus w prime into the divergence of weights w and w prime separately using linearity. Now for the second max part, once again, by linearity and w, we can use duality of the one infinity norm to turn it into some infinity norm problem depending on some function g. Um, so here g, we're just going to define it as some function depending on like f and the divergence, um, smooth divergence function d tilde phi. Um, the reason is in the electric flow setting, remember that that infinity norm part was just the infinity norm of f squared. Unfortunately, here it's a little more complicated because of this divergence function, but um, you can still capture it just by the infinity norm of some single function g, the function of f and f tilde, uh, f hat. To solve these L2 plus L infinity type flow problems, we're going to use the following result of King Peng such a walk. Informally, they show that for any vector g, resistance is r and p norm, p, that you can approximately solve min over all flows running like demand d of the linear part g transpose f plus the two norm part f with resistance is r and this high powered p norm part, fp to the p, to high accuracy in almost linear time. To apply the solver result, there's several things that they get around. The first thing is that there's L infinity versus LP. Well, the result works with P as root log M, and therefore is actually good enough for our setting, basically. Um, remember that we initially wanted to get weight increases, not solve a flow problem. Luckily, our minimax setup actually gives us a pair uh, flow and weight changes inducing that flow. And you can get the weight change by taking the gradient of the flow. Additionally, um, in, the, in the first problem where you have um, the infinity norm squared, and the second problem where you have infinity, the King Pace algebra Wong framework only handles p norm to the p actually. So it's unclear um, initially how you would do that. Fortunately, you can reduce between these problems by a line search procedure. And finally, there's this weighting matrix C on the infinity norm part, but you kind of want it to be unit weight to apply the king pain sensitive along result. It only handles unit weighted flows on the p-norm part. In this case, um, what we do is we set c equals the entity matrix, and we just hope it works. And it does work with some additional complications. Um, additionally, for the problem in the divergence setting, um, not the um, first problem, the second problem, um, you need to open up the methods of King Pang's Devil Wong a little more, specifically the piece about iterative refinement. And instead, we show that to solve the divergence problem with the infinity norm regularizer, we can actually solve um, an almost constant number of L2 plus LP norm flows to solve that. And that's how we get an almost linear runtime for solving these L2 plus L infinity flow problems. At this point, we can put all these things together to get a full Maxwell algorithm. The first step we're going to do, as discussed, is we're going to do some preconditioning. And um, we're going to let nu be the amount of flow we've already sent from x to t. And we want to route nu star um, total max flow, which is the optimum for the problem. We're going to set delta to be nu star minus nu, the amount of actual we could route, divided by m to the 1 half minus eta. Doing this ensures that if you route O, uh, if you do O tilde m to the one half minus eta rounds, then um, you're going to converge to a nearly optimal solution. The main augmenting or progress that we're going to do is we're going to solve an L2 plus LP flow to find an approximate solution um, f hat, f hat equals arg min. Um, over this di uh, smooth divergence term plus this infinity norm regularizing piece. And then we're going to use that our minimax setup naturally gives us a flow and a weight vector so that 
if you increase the flow by f hat and the weight by w prime, then you land at another central path point. And finally, when the total amount of flow left to be routed is at most m with one half minus eta, the algorithm quits and just uses augmenting paths to finish. In this way, we can choose eta to be one sixth, which is better than the previous approach because we're using these divergence um, minimizing flows and not electric flows. But you can choose eta as one sixth, and you can prove that the weight is O of m throughout. Therefore, the total running time is m to the 3 halves minus eta is m to the 4 thirds plus little o of 1, where every single step of the algorithm can be implemented in m to the 1 plus little o of 1 time because we're using this almost linear time flow solver of King Peng Sitch Little Wong. And all other steps um, easily can be done in linear time. To conclude, um, let me just rediscuss some of the key points. So the first thing is we give an improved algorithm for unit capacity maximum by parfait mashing and runs in time m to the 4 thirds plus little o of 1. The key idea is that instead of using electric energy, we're going to use these Bregman divergence minimizing flows. And the point is that energy is a second order approximation to Bregman divergence. And that's why using Bregman divergence actually is more tight. Um, it's more tight in the sense that if we're able to compute the Bregman divergence minimizing flow, we actually never need to leave the central path and do recentering, which is what you need to do in the case where you use electric flows. As a result, we can focus on minimizing the L infinity norm of congestion instead of L4, which is what was done in previous work. And finally, to reduce the L infinity norm of congestion with weight changes, we use this science minimax um, setup which was used in these energy and divergence um, maximization frameworks. Energy maximization in the previous work of Lou Sitford and divergence maximization here. There are several further directions that we can look at. Um, I think one very interesting direction is whether you can more directly get m to the fourth or plus little of one or kind of any improvement over m to three halves by more directly using some L2 plus LP oracle. In some sense, our algorithm doesn't look that much like an interior point method. It's definitely non-standard. And I think that maybe says that there may be a more direct way to use L2 plus LP flows to get an improved runtime. Additionally, are there further applications of our algorithm? For example, um, it's been shown that you can do min cost flow in M to the four thirds plus the lower one in this box, actually, um, following our methods. And finally, our algorithms depend polynomially in you. Can you get an m to the 3 halves minus um, c for any c times polylog u runtime for this problem? Yeah. Um, that's all I have, and would be happy to take any questions at a later session. Thanks.